The Italian government is reportedly close to pulling out of China's Belt and Road Initiative. Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney says Rome's further involvement in Xi Jinping's global trade network is up for debate. But can she exit the agreement and please Washington without making an enemy of Beijing? Welcome to the program. I'm Philip Hampshire. Italy was the only G7 country to sign up to Beijing's Belt and Road Initiative. The global investment network, which aims to fund infrastructure across the globe, is a key part of Xi Jinping's foreign policy. But Rome's involvement was criticized by Brussels and Washington, who see the whole program as a Beijing power grab. It was Italy's previous Prime Minister, Giuseppe Conti, that signed up when the country was desperate for investment. But under the current leader, Giorgia Maloney, reportedly, she sees strong relations with the US as a priority. China is not pleased and is working to keep Italy on board. So can Maloney keep both Beijing and Washington happy? Joining me to discuss this in the studio, we have Stephen Chan, who's Professor of World Politics at the School of Oriental and African Studies. Meanwhile, in Rome, in Italy, we have Thomas Fazi, who is a journalist. And in Beijing, we have Andy Mock, who's a Senior Research Fellow at the Center for China and Globalization. And in London, Lorenzo Codogno, who is a visiting professor at the LSE and formerly chief economist at the Italian Treasury. So, Stephen, let me start off with you because you're here in the studio with me. Um, in the case of Italy pulling out of the Belt and Road Initiative, um, what are the advantages to it of pulling out? And why shouldn't it just stay in and reap whatever benefits it gains from that? Well, the problem is that the benefits right now are quite small. After a spurt of investment, after Prime Minister Conte took Italy into the Belt and Road Initiative, investment from China has really dwindled quite significantly. It's now far less than what they're putting into France and Germany, who are who, not. Who aren't actually in the Belt and Road. Absolutely, and refused to join it. So I think that there are no disadvantages in terms of income for Italy. There are all kinds of advantages in terms of being able to be seen as a greater, important, and playable partner within the Western alliance. That's becoming more important in world politics right now. Also, it fulfills campaign promise on the part of Prime Minister Maloney, where on the campaign trail at the last election, she made a point about some of the investment from China being bad investment. In other words, the quality of it, the oversight that went with it, wasn't up to what she thought were decent standards. So for the Italians, it is a risk because it does, in fact, carry with it the possibility of making Beijing angry. But they think that they'll be able to reap the benefits in terms of being closer to the West and closer in particular to the United States of America. Thomas, do you think that Maloney is making a mistake here by threatening to pull out of the Belt and Road Initiative? She's not actually done it yet. She's merely talking about the possibility, isn't she? Right. Well, it's not even her talking about it, really. It's the, it's the Western press, mainly the American press, that's uh, thrown around these rumors. Clearly, it's a way to pressure the government into abandoning the uh, Belt and Road Initiative. Um, look, Italy is a country that's been essentially stagnating for the past 20 years. That's you know, largely the result of the uh, <laughs> decision to join the uh, um, the straitjacket of the euro, one of the most ill-conceived monetary unions ever. And uh, in, in this context, Italy really can't afford to give up on what's the world's second largest consumer market, what's potentially a huge source of investment, even though maybe the volume of investment hasn't lived up, lived up to expectations yet. Um, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's pure self-harm on Italy's uh, behalf to give up on that. And more in general, I would say, on the China-led, you know, BRICS uh, uh, block, which represents the largest, you know, trading block in in the world. And I think it simply confirms uh, Maloney's um, complete subservience to uh, to America, to Washington, and more in general, uh, Italy's, I would say, de facto status of um, of um, of an American protectorate. 
uh, there's, you know, it would be, uh, uh, you know, a waste of time to look for complex reasons why Maloney is making this decision. She's making it because she knows that her political survival depends on keeping her overseers in Washington, in Brussels, and in Frankfurt happy, because Italy is not a fully sovereign country. And that's what she's doing. She's essentially uh, obeying the orders coming from Washington. Uh, nothing more to it than, than that. Do you think it's the right choice, though, to pull out of it, or do you think it's a better choice to stay in? No, I think it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a rather crazy choice for the reasons I said. You know, Italy, as a country that has been stagnating for so long, cannot afford to give up on such a big market, cannot afford, uh, I would say, to, to join America's uh, attempt to build a new Iron Curtain between the West and not just China, but the rest of the world, really, if we consider you know, just, you know, what, how large the BRICS plus trading bloc is, uh, is. And so uh, I think it's purely uh, suicidal for Italy to, uh, to give up on, uh, on, on trade and I would say more in general on positive political relations with the rest of the world, first and foremost, uh, China. Italy can't afford to isolate, and so isolate itself inside, uh, uh, you know, the Western uh, fort. We can't afford to do that. It's completely against our national interests, and it's frankly sad and uh, even a bit embarrassing to see uh, our leaders really being so uh, subservient to, um, to foreign diktats. Lorenzo, what do you make of that? Uh, do you think that Italy is, if you like, just following a, a diktat from the United States, or do you think that there are sound economic reasons to pull out of this deal? I think it's mainly uh, an economic uh, and uh, geopolitical game. Uh, so from a pure uh, uh, economic point of view, it doesn't make sense. Uh, but keep in mind that being in or being out uh, doesn't change much. Uh, the underlying picture, because as was mentioned by your previous guest, uh, um, uh, it doesn't matter whether you're in or out. Uh, many other countries in Europe have a much stronger link with China than Italy and they are out. So let's mention uh, uh, the UK. The UK has attracted foreign direct investment from China five times more than Italy over the past 10 years. Germany has massive investments in China, France the same. So Italy is not fully exposed to China, and uh, effectively being part of the Belt and Road might be a way to get a large piece of the, of the activity. But again, it is a bit embarrassing from a geopolitical point you and uh, it matters. So Italy is the only G7 country that is in the Belt and Road Initiative right now, and certainly for a few political reasons that puts Italy a little bit at odds with the other countries that are in the G7. So it's mostly a geopolitical problem, not an economic problem for now. Uh, obviously, there is a, an attempt by European authorities, by also the US, to Hold, uh, hold on, hold on, Lorenzo. Uh, Lorenzo, from, let's get into uh, that. Let me get into that in a second. China. Let me take this across to Andy first. Uh, Andy, uh, I'm assuming that you're going, you're going to support the uh, idea of Italy staying within the Belt and Road Initiative. What do you think China's reaction would be to Italy even considering leaving the Belt and Road Initiative? A lot of this is media rumors. So whether this actually happens or not, I think remains to be seen. Um, I think the Chinese view would be, of course, disappointment. Uh, you know, China has long held that it's ready to work with uh, any country, uh, irrespective of its political system, its values, uh, as long as there's uh, a commitment to win-win, uh, respect for sovereignty, and global development. So, of course, Italy is an important country, a G7 country. So if Italy were uh, to withdraw. I think that would be met with uh, with disappointment um, in China. And I think to add to what was said earlier, too, I think it would be a grave strategic misstep if Italy were uh, to withdraw, not only because of the uh, potential economic losses uh, from infrastructure investment and trade with the BRI countries, uh, but this also could undermine Maloney's uh, domestic political support. There are many, many uh, companies in Italy uh, that want more, not less, engagement uh, with China. And the other point I would make, too, is that in the technologies of the future, look at electric vehicles. China's playing an important role, uh, not just as a market,
but as a source of technology, uh, as a source of uh, those kinds of uh, modern uh, types of infrastructure as well. And uh, Italy, by removing itself uh, or distinct, distancing itself uh, from this, certainly, I think, does not do the country any good and certainly does not do Italian business any good either. But the Italian businesses might fire back that France and Germany aren't in the Belt and Road Initiative. And as we were hearing from Stephen a few moments ago, they're getting more investment out of China than Italy is. So Italy might look at this and say, well, what's the point in being in then? Well, I think we're conflating uh, this idea here. So the BRI is not a guarantee of any kind of particular market benefit or uh, investment. Um, but I think it is an opportunity to be part of uh, an agglomeration uh, working towards certain uh, commonly held goals and objectives. Um, and again, you know, I think China does not discriminate to say, well, if you're not uh, in the Belt and Road, then we're not going to work with you. And clearly, Germany and France, I think, are great examples of this. The other point I would make, too, is this would put Italy uh, really um, bucking the historical trends. Uh, we look at Europe. Uh, there's a greater call for strategic autonomy. Macron was in China uh, recently talking about this. Um, and I think this is an important trend. Uh, the so-called T25, these uh, other countries around the world that do not want to be uh, on the U.S. side and want to pursue their own interests. So I think this is a very, very important uh, development that sometimes goes under the flag of multipolarity uh, and is a very important historical trend. So I think Italy would be uh, putting itself on the wrong side of uh, this historical trend as well. Stephen, um, Italy's in a really difficult position. If you go and look at GDP numbers over the course of, well, the period since more or less it adopted the euro uh, back in, in the uh, 1998, 1999, year 2000, Italy's GDP has gone sideways. So it's in a tough spot because it doesn't know, does it do everything the same as it's done up until now to maintain its current level, or does it change stuff and then risk slipping back further? Is that not a problem that it faces with, do we remain in the Belt and Road? Do we pull out of the Belt and Road? Whether Italy remains in the Belt and Road or not is not going to determine the future of the Italian economy. There might be certain advantages one way or the other, but Italy has got a structural problem with this economy that it's got to confront, and that's irrespective of its relations with China. I'm absolutely certain that if they do manage to withdraw from the Belt and Road Initiative, the Chinese are not going to be punitive. In other words, it's in the Chinese interest to maintain good, stable, strong, and maybe even improving economic and trade ties. It's not all one-way traffic. So what you've got probably right now, and I think it's more than just rumor being reported upon in Washington, I think Prime Minister Maloney has very directly signaled she intends to fulfill her campaign promise. But the first phase of the link in the Belt and Road Initiative was going to run out in 2024 anyway. It can be renewed, subject to agreement or renegotiation on both sides. No one was expecting anyone to pull out. But what you're probably seeing right now is a signal to renegotiate over a period of time some months with a view to pulling out. In that case, it's up to the Chinese to put more, as it were, on the table as to what Italy can gain. But that's, that's the question here. I mean, without wishing to be too cynical, is this a tactic? Give us more when we come back to the negotiating table. Maloney is not noted as a negotiating tactician. I think that she does have something of the ideologue about her. She's not been nearly as right-wing as many of her critics feared. She's basically charted a reasonably middle path. But I think that this really is a signal that she wants at least the appearance of her campaign promises being taken seriously. And I think also there is a view in Italy, and this is Chinese rhetoric, about Italy being a middle power between the two great superpowers, a bridge, a middle power bridge. The Italians don't like that. They don't want to be a middle power bridge for anybody. So they would like to elevate themselves in terms of status, in terms of throw weight in the world. And right now, the judgment there seems to be this can only be done by having a far greater seat at the Western table. Thomas, do you think that this could be some kind of 3D chess tactical play here 
by the Maloney government and they're, they're angling for more money when they get back to the negotiating table in six months' time? I wish it were. But um, honestly, I don't, there's, I don't see neither strategy nor uh, tactics here. As I said, it really is the Maloney government simply uh, obeying what the American uh, government is telling Italy to do. That said, I do agree that Italy will end up continuing uh, to trade with China. It can't afford not to do so. Um, and in fact, but America isn't so much concerned about trade itself. It knows that it can't tell countries to stop trading with China. The problem with the BRI is that it's a political symbol of the alternative form of globalization that China is building, which, as has been mentioned, is a peaceful uh, way to uh, strengthen, to build new trade, new economic, new political, win-win, uh, mutually beneficial uh, relations. And that's a radically alternative form of globalization to the, I would say, violent, coercive, exploitative form of globalization that has historically been sponsored by the United States. And so America clearly sees the BRI as a threat to its hegemony and to its uh, kind of model of globalization. And they're right, it is a threat. Uh, that said, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a losing battle for America to try to stop countries joining the BRI. We know that about 150 countries have already joined up. Uh, more, want to jo more want to join. Uh, America knows that it can't do anything to stop that. It's no coincidence that the only countries that are now, uh, that either haven't joined the BRI or, as in Italy's case, are likely to now drop out of it, are the ones that are more or, more or less uh, under America's direct control. Uh, and again, I mean, when we speak of the level of control America has over Italy, let's not forget that Italy you know, actually hosts thousands of U.S. Uh, soldiers on Italian soil. We have some of the most important American military bases in the European and Mediterranean region. Uh, Italy is not free to choose its policy with regard to uh, uh, China, I would say. Not, not entirely free. Um, but, let me, you know, as, as let me it's, take it's this across. Trying let to stem the tide, but it's a losing battle, I think. Andy, let me take this over to you. Um, just for the viewers at home who are wondering how big the China's Belt and Road Initiative is, we've got some graphics here indicating the total side of it. 44 countries involved in the Belt and Road are in Sub-Saharan Africa. 35 Belt and Road Initiative countries are in Europe and Central Asia, including Italy at present. 25 countries are in East Asia and the Pacific. That's if we include China as well. This is an enormous global movement. Uh, Thomas has already noted that the only countries that aren't really involved in this are those that are directly tied with the US in some way, either uh, North America, Western Europe, or Brazil and Argentina and Australia. So, Andy, um, what does it mean for China if Italy pulls out of this initiative? Is this like a, a diplomatic loss, as it were, or is it an economic loss? Does it matter? No, I think that's a very good question. Um, I think certainly, again, from China's perspective, it wants to work with as many countries as possible. So from that perspective, I think, yes, it would be disappointing. Um, but in the larger scheme of things, I think that... Um, you know, things will keep uh, moving on. So uh, it's not just the, the, the BRI. There's also the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. There's BRICS. Uh, there's the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, SCO. Uh, so there's a multitude of organizations uh, and platforms uh, that China works in and through. Uh, and again, I think it'll be a disappointment. It'll be uh, a bit of a setback, but certainly... Uh, we have to recognize, too, as we, we heard earlier, that uh, the BRI is not a silver bullet. It's not a panacea for anybody. Uh, it's certainly very important. I think it's uh, made enormous strides. Uh, it's something that's never been done in human history. So I think it's not surprising that there are uh, some growing pains and some teething problems uh, with any country uh, involved in doing this. And uh, it's part of the process to work that out. But... Um, you know, again, I think the thing to emphasize here that it's planned and we have to see how this will ultimately play out.
OK, I've got a quote here from uh, Francesca uh, Giretti, who is at the Mercator Institute for Chinese Studies. Here's what she has to say. Um, it says the following. Withdrawing from the Silk Road has very few economic disadvantages, I think. It probably involves marginal economic risks. I don't expect these economic risks to be huge. Perhaps we might see actions against, for example, luxury brands in China through boycotts. It will depend on whether China sees this as something that harms its core interests or not. I don't think we will see any harsh responses from Beijing. Uh, Thomas, do you think that's a reasonable characterization? Do you think there's going to be payback for Italy and suddenly people aren't going to want to have Gucci handbags in Beijing? Well, first of all, I think, uh, you know, the Mercato Institute is a well-known uh, mouthpiece of Western and American propaganda, so I wouldn't take whatever they say too seriously. Um, that said, I don't expect a big backlash from uh, Beijing because, uh, well, certainly not at the governmental level, because that's generally not how uh, Beijing uh, operates. I think, uh, you know, even if this... Uh, if uh, Italy pulls out of the BRI, I think the China will uh, be want, want to be right back at the table trying to negotiate maybe a new bilateral deal, you know, less politically sensitive. Um, will there be a reaction from Chinese consumers? Uh, maybe. Honestly, I, I don't expect uh, that to uh, th that to happen, uh, not unless the government uh, kind of, you know, um, fans the flames of that, but I don't expect that to happen. So uh, again, this is, uh, it's, it's, it's about politics. It's about symbols. It's not so much about trade um, itself. And so I think, you know, behind the scenes, Italy and China will be working on some form of new uh, uh, agreement. I think trade will continue, um, but politically, Italy will be much, much weaker because uh, you know it will it will have given up, uh, you know, a chance the chance of being an autonomous player, uh, a middle player between these two uh, confrontational blocks. Uh, by by doing this, it simply signals that it has no autonomy whatsoever, and that you know it accepts its role its role as a completely uh, kind of as as a non-player uh, within the uh, you know kind of wider uh, U.S. sphere of influence. So uh, I think this geopolitically weakens uh, Europe rather than strengthening it. Stephen, uh, do you think that uh, Italy pulling out would geopolitically weaken Europe or not? I mean, it, it's hard to see what the advantage is to Italy of remaining in the Belt and Road Initiative if other people in Europe are getting more investment out of China in the first place, and if there aren't that many consequences of leaving and there doesn't seem to have been a lot of investment in Italy, what are the benefits of the BRI to Italy? I can't actually see any substantial concrete benefits that can be seen to be enduring at the stage. And as for Europe, it won't blink an eye if Italy should withdraw. It would just be business as usual within the European community, within the European Union. To a certain extent, Italy's membership of the BRI was a non-event. They gained nothing over, say, as we've discussed, France and Germany established cordial relationships, but it's not in China's interest to diminish that kind of cordiality. China would see that Italy is not an enemy. Whether it's a clone of American interests is another question entirely that we could discuss for quite some time. And I don't think the Chinese consumer is going to start boycotting Italian goods. I mean, my Armani jacket was actually tailored in China. That kind of interaction. When I go to China, Everyone is into brand names, many of which have got Italian origin. I think the Chinese will take this as a radical renegotiation, but they're quite used to that. I mean, I'm often in Beijing negotiating on the side of African delegations, almost all of whom are members of the Belt and Road Initiative, as you said, but they want to renegotiate bits and pieces of it and they're within their rights to do so. This is, to a certain extent, business as usual for China. Andy, very quickly, last question to you, if I may. Um, is there a risk to the Belt and Road Initiative brand here? Uh, there have been lots of stories in the West about countries like Sri Lanka or Kenya or, or some of the other countries that have taken out loans from China and then are struggling to pay them back based on their current infrastructure investments that have been made. Perhaps they were bad investments. Perhaps they've been mismanaged. If Italy pulls out as well, 
does this not begin to look like a trend? I don't think that it does. I mean, um, you know, this quote unquote debt trap uh, diplomacy of the BRI, I think is largely a Western media uh, confection. Um, there's been enormous uh, progress and achievements made uh, through the Belt and Road Initiative amongst many countries around the world. So I think that the um, this debt tr quote unquote debt trap diplomacy uh, charge that's leveled at the BRI is largely uh, a Western media confection. Uh, there have been real achievements, real progress made uh, in the BRI. I mean, the diplomatic community here in Beijing, you know, what I've heard is kind of a joke is that when China comes, uh, they get a new bridge or a new hospital. When the U.S. comes, they get a lecture. And I think this is, again, uh, largely we can see through efforts like the BRI. And if Italy does decide to withdraw against it, be it'd be a disappointment. Uh, but certainly, I think the BRI will still continue to grow and continue to prosper. Right. Stephen, Andy, Lorenzo, Thomas, thank you all four of you for joining me today. I'm sorry we don't have more time to talk about this. That's all we have time for in our discussion, but you can see more discussion and debate if you head on over to our YouTube channel. Just go there and search for Roundtable TRT World. But for now, from me here and the entire team, thank you for watching and goodbye.